Hi folks, my name's Luke, I'm from Bradford Creations and welcome back to my workshop. So in today's video we're going to be talking about how you can get into blacksmithing. This is uh, it's a big problem for a lot of people, there's a lot of uh, things that people think they need which they don't, there's a lot of uh, overly expensive tools that they think they need that they don't. So I wanted to do a uh, a video which I share my basic knowledge on how you as, as a normal everyday person can get yourself into blacksmithing so uh, just to be clear I'm I'm no no expert I haven't been doing this 30 years I haven't been you know I mean I've been doing this uh, say two or three years now so uh, but what I am is someone who's had to figure all this out for himself I've had to, uh, I've had to go through forums, go through YouTube videos, try and figure out who's telling the truth, who's this, who's just telling you to do buy this when you don't need it and yeah it's been a, lo a long hard road and there's a lot of trial and error but I just wanted to share this information with you in a brand new series which is just going to be ongoing and um, yeah so today is the introduction, I'm going to uh, do six points quickly on how you guys can get into blacksmithing. Uh, just the basic things you need with a little bit of information and then we're going to go on and we're going to do individual videos on each of these points and uh, and then we'll just carry on after that and we'll start talking about all sorts of other things that you could need and want. So um, so yeah, let's get straight into it with number one, which uh, is experience. Now I'm not saying that you need to go and train at the feet of a master for 10 years, I'm not saying you need to go to college or university to study blacksmithing for a couple of years, however if you wanted to go do that then all the power to you. But before you get into this, before you, you make that commitment to, to push forwards and start getting all your gear and start getting all the stuff together, go and have a go. There are plenty of uh, blacksmithing, bladesmithing, you know, like experience days out there. That's how I got started. My wife brought me a, a blacksmithing day and I absolutely loved it and I said, oh, I, I have to do this from now on. But yeah, don't just watch it on YouTube and think that'll be cool. Get out there and go and do it. I said, there's there's experience days all over this country and I'm sure there's experience days in, in other countries as well. So uh, yeah, make sure you get yourself booked onto a course. Mine was about £100, £120, something like that. I did it at a... Uh, at a museum uh, and it was like a, like a 17th century forge or something like that it was a really really cool there's a really young uh, a really good young guy who was uh, who was training us on uh, on how to make little things and you just go and you just make like small items uh, little uh, letter openers key rings uh, fire stokers you know like your traditional blacksmithing tools and it just teaches you a, a lot about the safety of it there's a lot obviously you're dealing with extremely hot pieces of metal and uh, you know you learn about things like black heat which we'll go through in, in another video and uh, yeah you, you, it's just really good just to get out there and go yes I'm gonna like this because I'm telling you like blacksmithing is, uh, is, is it's not easy in the sense that you know I mean if you wanted to turn this into a living you're gonna be working very long hours next to a very hot forge swinging a very heavy hammer for a long period of time so you need to make sure before you go out and spend hundreds hundreds of pounds on, on all your equipment and gear that you are going to like it and this is, this is for you. So yeah, get yourself out there, go and get yourself on an experience day and if you like it then we'll move on to number two. Right then folks, so number two is workspace. So this isn't something that you can just do, set it up in your front room and crack on. Um, you need your own dedicated workspace. These can be like, I mean, you can make it so you can put your tools and your equipment away to some description, but what you need is, is a, a ventilated outdoor or a, or a purpose-built workspace. Um, like I said, obviously, you can't just set this up inside the house uh, for obvious safety reasons. Um, as you can see behind me, this is my workshop behind me, as you can see, the, the desk where I normally film at back there. And... Uh, I purposely built this, like after I went and did my experience day, I purposely built this um, for my blacksmithing. So it's not a massive, it's about uh, it's about 20 foot by 14 foot, something like that. It's not a huge workshop. I am actually planning on upgrading soon and moving to a proper unit. 
but uh, you know that's all in the future so um so yeah you don't need a massive amount of space you don't even have to have indoor you know what i mean like like workshop like mine um i've definitely seen people get started on just a, a, a patio or a, a level piece of uh of ground outside so don't think that you need to go and have a big workshop or you need to go and rent out a unit or anything like that just be aware that this is a a messy and, and, and dirty sort of job so if you're going to be doing it out on your patio like make sure obviously people who you live with and that are, are happy that you're going to be doing it like you I mean you, things like your anvil and that they're going to need to stay where they where they're put being you know, obviously anvils that can weigh a lot you don't want to be moving it about like you, your forge and stuff it needs to be kept dry so you need to make sure you've got uh, coverings for your forge and that but yeah like you know, something as simple as this this didn't cost much to build um, and it does the job I've had it for two three years now and uh, yeah it, 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 it does the job perfectly well we'll go into more detail in another video and other, other options you've got but you know I mean quickly you can do like maker spaces that I know they're, they're quite big in America and they're starting to come over here like areas like you know, that someone will rent you know they'll rent you a, a section of a uh, of like a, a warehouse or a big unit or something like that for you to go and do what you want in and stuff like that if you've got the money go and rent yourself a little unit they'll start at about 200 pounds a month something like that for a small one and uh yeah i mean like you know garages stuff like that they're, they're perfect for this stuff so just just please 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 don't think you can do this you know in while watching the telly in your front room i'm sure i don't have to tell you that but you know what i mean there's some people out there and that so yeah so getting your space sorted you probably need something like I'd say minimum sort of eight foot by eight foot uh, just for your, your forge your anvil and, and a couple of tools and stuff like that you can make this quite compact when you need to be but ever, there's a lot of heavy stuff there's a lot of stuff that you need and then as you grow out I mean I'm slightly outgrowing this this workshop now um, as I'm getting more and more tools and bigger and better tools and I'm starting to get to the point where I've, um, I can't fit it all in I've actually um, in the little lean-to got some like machineries and some like fly presses and stuff which I just don't have space for at the moment so uh, yeah as you get bigger you're going to take up more space etc etc so yeah so get your working space sorted figure out where you're going to do it make sure you're asking permission also things like think about noise pollution think about your neighbours go and have a chat with them tell them what you're going to be doing and uh and see what they say because if they're going to come if you're going to go out and spend hundreds of pounds on all your gear and they're going to make a complaint to the council the first day you start doing it then that's a problem isn't it so speak to people who are around you make sure they're happy with what's going on and uh yeah make a space so this is probably the most difficult thing you can to get started really because you obviously got people who live in flats and and uh, you know, apartments etc so yeah guys workspace let's move on to number three right then, folks number three is a good anvil so obviously this is the, the the symbol of a of a blacksmith this is this is the main tool that we use when blacksmithing my this is my anvil this is a uh, a Brooks London pattern anvil uh, I paid about 350 pounds for this this isn't my first anvil uh, my first anvil was actually uh, a, a piece of railway track that I found. Uh, it was just lying on, on the road somewhere and I, I managed to pick it up. It's obviously part of some repair or something like that. And I literally picked it up. I got a friend to mill the top flat and then I cut a rudimentary horn into it. And uh, that was my anvil for a good year and a half, two years. And uh, I'll see if I can find a picture of it to put up on the, on the video. Uh, I ended up selling it to someone who wanted to get started in blacksmithing. So, uh, so yeah, anvil, they can be really tricky to get hold of, and this is probably going to be your biggest expense. Uh, if you wanted a big proper anvil like this, you're looking £300 upwards. I mean, brand new ones can cost you like six, seven, eight hundred, depending on how big and heavy you want. This is a pretty small one in comparison to some of them, but you know, it does the job for me in my little workshop. So, yeah, um, don't think you, just, you, you can only use normal anvils. Don't, don't listen to people when they say oh you've got to go out and spend 600 pound on this anvil you don't at all you can get started for next to nothing you can buy these railroad anvils online for around 50 pound which will just get you going um 
you can you know, get sections of railway track for for the same sort of thing and do it yourself. There's uh, there's a lot of options. I mean, literally all you need to get started is a flat, solid piece of steel. Um, and then I mean, there's there's plenty of things out there that are known as uh, ASOs or anvil shaped objects in the game. So yeah, th this is the thing. We'll go over best ways you can get anvils and stuff in another video, and we'll go over. Uh, the different parts of the anvil, you know I mean, and uh, in another video, and uh, we'll also talk about how uh, what you need to look out for when you're buying your first proper anvil. So, guys, let's move on to uh, number four. Right then, folks, so number four is a forge. So, there are two main types of forges that blacksmiths use, there are others, but uh, the two main ones. Are a coal or coke forge, which you will see is the more traditional blacksmithing forge, and uh, propane or gas forges, which is what I have here. Both have their ups and downs. Um, I prefer the gas forge simply because propane forges run cleaner, like you don't get uh, the smoke you get from a coal or coke forge, and uh, you don't have the chance like in, in a coke coal forge you can get your your steel a lot hotter than you could in this a lot quicker and a lot easier which is great for things like um forge welding and stuff like that so uh yeah look, you also run the chance of burning the steel lot yes steel can burn so uh the, in the propane forge it's pretty much impossible to burn your steel like uh, like if you put your work piece into a coke forge you need to First of all, you've got to put it into the forge itself, so you can't actually see it. You're literally using experience and a bit of guesswork and a bit of trial and error to keep taking it out and making sure that the, the piece is ready to be worked. Whereas with this, I can light the forge up, chuck the work piece in and go and make a cup of tea and I'm, I'm safe in the knowledge that when I come back out, it's, I'm, re I'm ready to go. So, um, yeah, the, the problem with uh, propane forges are they are quite noisy. They, they let off this... It's god awful roar, as my, my wife would call it. Um, they are very noisy, especially if you have like uh, like air inducted ones and stuff like that, which forces air through the systems. These are the type ones. So what we do is you open these little headers at the top, and that's up. And, and basically, as the the propane comes through the system, it pulls the air in. But you have ones which uh, force air into the system, but using a like a um, like a pump type thing. So uh, yeah, that, that can be very noisy. Even these ones, just the raw is it's quite noisy. So you need to think about that when you're you're picking your thing. But remember that like you need to think about what your neighbours are going to prefer if you are doing it in the back garden. Are they going to prefer a, a a noisy thing during the day, or are they going to prefer lots of smoke and you know all this stuff going on all the time? You know, so they can't put their washing out and stuff. The propane forges are more friendly to uh, um, to people doing blacksmithing in a, in a more domesticated environment and and if you're planning on doing a like a coke or coal forge you need to make sure you've got good ventilation very very good into ventilation and um you know probably doing it outside is better if you're doing it inside you need to make sure you've got uh, extractors and and uh, a way of getting that smoke out of where you're working so yeah we'll go in again we'll go into details a little bit more in another video on on forges best places to buy them how you can make them uh, in, in another video, this is a, a Devil Forge. Um, I brought it off eBay actually. Like I just took a chance with it. It's from uh, from Eastern Europe, and I cannot recommend these highly enough. Like it literally come with everything I needed to get this started and up and running, other than the propane, obviously. And uh, yeah, and uh, all I've done is this table here. Is I've built this table. It's on wheels, so I'm able to uh, to pull it out and put it where I need it the propane tanks underneath which you probably can't see um, I can pull this out it's an independent unit I can put it wherever I want it use it put it back in the corner over here um, and then it's out of the way giving me more space to work with so yeah little tips and tricks like that we'll go through all it all again uh, when we do the main video on forges so okay number five then folks okay then folks so number five um, hammers and tongs these are your two basic tools that you're going to need to start blacksmithing. There are plenty of other things, wire brushes, uh, flatters, stuff like that. But you don't need to worry about that just to get you started. All, all this is literally 
just to get your foot in the door. I so said, once you start blacksmithing, you can start going, right, now, now I'm going to get myself a wire brush, now I'm going to get this, and you can expand. But to get started in blacksmithing, you absolutely need a good hammer and a good pair of tongs. Obviously, as you can see, I've got quite a few sets of tongs and quite a few hammers. Um, these have just been accrued over time, and uh, they're quite simple. See, tongs, you're going to have to bite the bullet a little bit because you know, you're not going to find too many of these sitting about. I brought... This is my first pair of tongs. Nice, simple set of tongs. I bought them off Amazon. I think they were about 20, 30 quid, something like that, which seems ridiculous for a two bits of metal riveted together. But, like I said, you're gonna have to bite the bullet. There's some of these, I've, um, a lot of these come as a, a pack I brought off eBay, and uh, some of them I've managed to find and scrounge from other places. Um, the yeah, tongs can be a bit difficult to find out in the wild, like they're not something you find in everyone's uh, you know, shed or or anything like that so yeah you don't have to bite the bullet and just pay a uh, pay a bit of a premium for some of these at the end so all you're going to want to start with are just flathead tongues like you're going to have like there's all different types of tongues as you can see here you know what i mean uh yeah you know what i mean like, there's all different types of ones but just to get you started pair of flathead tongues good ones make sure they fit together make sure they come together nice and close make sure you can get your hand around them comfortably and then uh yeah that's all you're going to need to get started to, to be honest they can be a little bit more difficult to hold on to things than some of the other things but like i said as you go on you'll acquire more and more stuff so hammers hammers are a lot more simple obviously everyone's seen a hammer everyone that knows a hammer and you can to some extent use any kind of hammer to do this um obviously we have different types of hammers here and stuff like that a lot of them have accrued over time and uh yeah don't listen to people who tell you you've got to go out and spend 100, 200, 300 pound on this special rounding hammer that blacksmiths use. Don't worry about that. I don't own one of these. I would love to, don't get me wrong, but I can't justify spending a couple hundred quid. I mean, I might make one one day. But um, I, I, can't, I couldn't justify spending a few hundred pounds on a hammer. Uh, my hammer that I mainly use all the time, which you'll see me using all the time, is this one here. This is a just a cross peen hammer. Again, we'll go through in, in the hammer and tongues video, we'll go through all the different types of hammers and stuff that you're going to be using and what they do when you're working and what they do to the material when you're striking with them. But this is the main hammer I use. It's a two pound cross peen hammer. And I paid two pounds for this at a car boot sale. It was brand new, still had the wrapper over the head. The guy just saw a hammer. Most people don't care about hammers, but to a blacksmith, this is your bread and butter. This is the tool you need to do your work. And a lot of people, they, they just disregard hammers. They just think it's a, a useless tool, especially ones like this with cross pins and stuff like that. They don't know what it's for. So you'll get these dirt cheap. And this is the hammer I use the most out of all my hammers. I've definitely got big, heavier, three or four pound hammers and uh, you know, smaller hammers, hammers with chisels on the end, like that's a masonry hammer which I used, I started off using before I got a, a hot cut, again we'll go through all this, I was using this to cut my work, like as in striking the hammer and it was cutting, cutting my work, so yeah, there's loads of different types of hammers and stuff, you'll find all these, car boot sales are fantastic for getting hammers and stuff like that, um, I would recommend getting wood handles if you can, the, the synthetic handles like this one with the, like the rubber um, after a while they'll cause blistering on your hands I mean you can get you're gonna get blisters whatever happens that's just a part for the course to be fair you, you just get used to it and then your hands will sort of toughen up but these will cause a lot more sort of blistering a lot more pain in your hands um, yeah a good wood handle uh, two pounds is probably a good starting weight um, you need to find what's good for you. I, I like a, like a two pound hammer for most of my work, but like I say, like if I'm doing a particularly tough piece, um, I might up to a, a three or four pound hammer just to uh, to help me along. Um, but yeah, again, we'll go through all this in a, in another video about hammers and stuff like that, and we'll go through all that. Okay, guys, on to the final point then. Okay, then, folks, final point, point number six is PPE. Now, this is a very very important thing. A lot of people neglect this point. But I, I think it's a, a really important thing that uh, that you have to look into before starting blacksmithing. So the basic piece of PPE that I, I would highly recommend you, you purchase is 
one of these I'll always I'm always always wearing this this is a big thick leather apron and it has saved me from from uh, being injured more times than I can count it's, it's definitely work worn right now um, but yeah like if you've got a hot piece of steel you drop it and it, and it somehow comes back towards you if you're wearing an apron it's going to hit the apron it's going to slide straight off it's going to hit the floor you won't feel a thing if you're just wearing your t-shirt underneath trust me you're going to feel it um, I mean I've had a, uh, a grinding disc on an angle grinder explode and it hit me in the chest and like it winded me like it's seriously like it left a big bruise and everything like that but if I wasn't wearing my apron it would have hit me it would have god knows what sort of damage it could have done i probably would have ended up in the hospital i mean it was it was a really really big hit it felt like mike tyson had just punched me in the sternum but yeah this is definitely something that i highly recommend people get it's got good pockets and stuff as well so you can put your tools and stuff in it put your phone in it pens etc rulers whatever you're using so it is useful as well as uh, as well as protective um about £15, pounds, something like that on Amazon, I'll put a link in the description below. Uh, a friend of mine brought me this actually, he brought me two for when people come round. So yeah, um, next thing is set of, uh, safety goggles. Now I'll be brutally honest, I don't tend to wear these because I wear glasses. I'm going to get myself a pair of uh, prescription safety goggles. But um, these are essential for when you're grinding and stuff like that and people will tell you to use them while you're, while you're forging as well like I said I don't tend to wear these too much and that, that's my fault I, I should be but uh, because of my glasses I get steamed up and stuff like that and I, I tend to not bother but um, highly recommend working the last thing you need especially when grinding is a bit of a uh, if you, you know, I've seen uh, cutting discs explode and go into people's eyes Obviously, when you're grinding, it's throwing up a lot of sparks. You don't want one of them in your eyes. It can really, really hurt you. So, yeah, little pair of safety goggles. I don't know, two, three quid, Amazon, something like that. You can go to any DIY, B&Q, Wix, whatever. Pick these up, a couple of quid. And, you know what I mean, might save your eyesight, so it's definitely worth it. Next thing is a, uh, a quick little mask. I think I paid about £8, £9 for this online. Uh, again, Amazon, nice and easy, little filters. I mean, I use this when grinding. I don't use it while blacksmithing. Uh, it doesn't really give off much gases or anything like that, unless I think something might give off a gas or something like that. I'll always just put this on. Um, I use this for grinding mostly. Um, you'll find when you're using an angle grinder, um, it throws off so much dirt. And I wasn't wearing it to start off with. And I used to get in the shower afterwards, and I'd used to have literally like just black black grit just coming out my nostrils and I'd like have sore throats the next day and stuff like that because you're just breathing in all this dust and, and metal shavings I and mean, it's really really bad for you so get yourself a little mask I said they're not expensive these clip off and you can just change them straight out these probably need changing to be fair but um, yeah really useful tool save you for any aggro obviously in the future you might think it's fine now but 10 years down the line when you've been breathing in grinding dust for god knows how long you might be wishing you were wearing one so get yourself a little mask for when you're grinding and stuff like that and uh, last thing is a good pair of welding gauntlets now we haven't spoke about welders we're talking about getting started in blacksmithing so why do you need a pair of welding gauntlets these are just fantastic when you're welding i always wear a welding gauntlet on my right hand i'm left-handed so i always hold my hand with my left hand and I wear a welding gauntlet on my right hand just because that's what's holding the tongues. You'd be surprised how quick a set of tongues will heat up. And uh, yeah, so you know, I mean, obviously, sometimes you're just holding onto the workpiece, sometimes you, you grab something by accident a bit or too high up or something like that. These give you just, you know, even if it's just a couple of seconds, I mean, the heat will, will penetrate these. But uh, it gives you a couple of seconds, like the amount of times I've grabbed something and gone, oh Jesus, like, like, and I've had to take my glove off. But as soon as you take the glove off, you're fine. You've not burnt yourself. You're perfectly fine to just carry on then. Like, you know, and if I had just grabbed that, it, I mean, it would have been a serious burn. I mean, blacksmithing is a, is a dangerous thing. We're talking thousands of degrees of heat, fire. We're talking, you know, I mean, bits of steel, metal, grinding dust. It's very dangerous and, and you need to think about yourself your safety and your future health so these little things they're not expensive again 
on the 10 15 quid on amazon use them every single day i'm in the workshop they're, 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 i mean they're just fantastic just for a, a cheap little pair of welding gloves and then obviously when you do start welding you've already got your welding gloves ready to go so folks that's uh, my first six points on how to get started in blacksmithing i hope you enjoyed the video if you do please like comment and subscribe and uh, like I said, this is going to be an ongoing series and I'm going to break down this. We're going to do a, a whole video on anvils and how to pick out the best anvil and, and what you're looking for on forges, on coal versus propane, uh, what sort of makes and models you want to be looking for, uh, PPE, stuff like that. We're going to do uh, a video on grinders, angle grinders, belt grinders, bench grinders. We're going to do uh, all sorts of different tools that you're going to be needing. But to start off with, these are the six basic things that I think you need to do or get to get the blacksmithing. That's all you need to do is get started. As soon as you get started, I promise you, the bug will hit you and then uh, you'll be away. All, all you'll be doing is trying to find new hammers. You'll be scouring car boots for new tools and stuff like that. But to get started, these six things. So if you have any questions, guys, please comment below and I'll try and answer them. And... Uh, I hope you have a nice day and I'll see you next time. Goodbye.